Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Ray Ward. I'm the director of the Wolfingdon Center here at Cabrini. Um, could we do a quick call out? Did anybody come from outside of Radnor for this event? Did anybody come from outside of the Philadelphia area for this event? Did anybody come from outside of Pennsylvania for this event? Did anybody come from outside of the, I'm going to get myself in trouble here, tri-state area? OK. Uh, can we get shout outs? Where are you coming from? Welcome back. Anybody else? Yes. <laughs> Welcome. Anybody? Who else do we have? Yes. Welcome. Anybody? One? Yes? Fort Myers, Florida. <laughs> Anybody got Florida beat? Anybody? Okay. You take home the carnations at the end of the night. <laughs> um, I think for almost everybody here, this is a welcome back. If anybody is here for the first time, welcome to Cabrini. Um, I think this is a, an emotional year for a lot of us. It's an emotional night. Um, but I think this is something very much worth doing, like the work that we've been doing here for so long. Uh, 67 years, it's a very important number. It's a very symbolic number. I don't know that everybody is, does everybody recognize that the 67 years of the university, the 67 years of Mother Cabrini, the 67 institution. Um, and uh, I'm just honored to be able to host in a small part uh, of this experience. The Mother Ursula Infante lecture used to be called Founders Day. Uh, and I have a list here of some very illustrious people who've spoken at this event in the past, including uh, Dr. Robert Bullard, who is thought of as the founder and father of environmental justice. Uh, Fred Cram at Kammer, uh, from, I believe he's at Xavier now, uh, working on uh, faith justice. We had Sister Helen Prejean come and speak. We had uh, Dr. Carolyn Wu, former president of Catholic Relief Services. We had John Carr from the Georgetown University Initiative on Catholic Social Thought and Public Life. Uh, and several others. Um, so we're very welcome, or very happy to welcome back Sister Ayla Curry to that uh, august company. <clears throat> I uh, learned two lessons uh, from the past on this. One was from John Carr, who said, never let one person speak. Uh, try to get multiple voices in. So we're going to have a little bit of that tonight. Um, but then the other one is, never forget who we are at Cabrini, and that what we do is learn and serve and try to change the world for the better. And that's what we're celebrating tonight. Uh, and I'm going to hand it over to Sister Christine Marie Baltus to start us in the prayer. Thank you. He's a little taller than I am. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. Good evening, everybody. It's such a joy for me to look and see so many, many familiar faces joining Ray and saying welcome. Welcome back, or welcome if you're a newcomer to, to Cabrini. This evening, I'd like to just give you a brief reflection on what this evening is all about. We are gathered here this evening to remember and to honor Mother Ursula Infante, the founders of our beloved Cabrini University. We wish to commemorate and recognize her indomitable spirit that enabled her to transform a dream <coughs> into a reality. Her commitment to Catholic education, as exemplified by Mother Cabrini, gave her the courage to proceed in her efforts. From the time of its opening in September of 1957, Mother Ursula worked tirelessly to transform the Dorrance Estate into a fledgling college where young ladies could become educators for future generations. Though not an easy undertaking, and one often met by obstacles and challenges, Cabrini College grew and flourished. For 67 years, Cabrini graduated thousands of women and men who were the recipients of an education of the heart a unique education that reflected our Cabrinian character for all that has been 
we say our thanks to God and to Mother Ursula. As we move forward in this time of completion of this wonderful mission, we do so in a spirit of faith that defies understanding. It is a faith based on trust. We trust that the Lord will enable us to go forward with confidence, a confidence to know that what we have received at Cabrini is meant to be shared with a world in need of healing and love. We pray for the graces we need to be able to place our trust in the Sacred Heart of Jesus and, like Mary, offer our fiat, our yes to all that awaits us as we move forward on our life's journeys. Good evening, everyone. I'm Helen Dryman, the interim president here at Cabrini. And it is my honor to introduce our guest speaker this evening for the Mother Ursula Infante lecture, Sister Eileen Curry, a member of the Order of the Missionary Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Sister Eileen is Philadelphia born and bred. She received her undergraduate degree in psychology from Cabrini College, now Cabrini University in 1966. She went on to receive a master's degree in religious education from LaSalle University and a master's degree in Christian spirituality from Creighton University. <clears throat> Sister Eileen has contributed to her order in multiple ways. She dedicated time as a provincial counselor in both the Eastern and Stella Maris provinces and as a trustee in Cabrini sponsored healthcare and education institutions. After entering the Missionary Sisters of the Sacred Heart, she served as a teacher and administrator in Cabrini schools, culminating in her role as president of Cabrini College from 1982 to 1992. Presidential terms of 10 years are rare and very few and far between. With the college presidency completed, Sister Eileen went to the Sacred Heart Jesuit Retreat House in Sedalia, Colorado, where she spent the next 30 years of her life, first helping direct retreatants and then working full-time leading retreats in Colorado, Maine, Massachusetts, New York, and Texas. Bidding farewell to Sister Eileen, Paula Sapienza, spokesperson for Sacred Heart Jesuit Retreat House said, True to the Cabrini charism, Sister Eileen Curry has communicated God's personal love in ways that touch hearts, inspire deeper relationships with God, and foster the authentic human and spiritual development of herself and others. We know Sister Eileen will continue to render her faithful and loving service to God's people in whatever capacity she is called during the next phase of her life, and we are grateful to learn about the Cabrini legacy, history, and continuing mission from this very thoughtful member of our community this evening. Welcome, Sister Eileen. Thank you, President Dryden. Welcome to all, and especially to you, Sister Eileen, for gracing us with your presence this evening my name is Dr. Angela Campbell. I serve as the Vice President for Mission, Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging, and Chief Mission Officer. And I'm quite humbled and thankful to be in this role and to be one of the stewards of our mission and legacy. I have two memorable moments to share about Sister Eileen Curry. Two, only two. <laughs> so, Sister Eileen, you blessed me in two very unique ways that I will always remember, and that I pray this short testimony also blesses you, as it blessed me. So, I met you um, during the assembly, post-assembly 
retreat in New Jersey. They have it every year. And I also was graced and blessed to see you online for the Cabrini Lay Missionary talk on the sacred heart of Jesus. Those are the two moments that I'll share. I'll start with your talk on the sacred heart. I had never before learned so much about the power of the sacred heart of Jesus until Sister Eileen talked about the meaning, the power, the presence of the sacred heart. It's not one thing to one person. Every person that has a devotion and adoration to the sacred heart has a special experience with the sacred heart. You gave a riveting presentation to no more than eight or nine people. And I thought that your presentation should be on a world stage. That's how powerful it was. It was intellectually stimulating. You gave the history. You talked about the theological positions on the sacred heart, the philosophies on the sacred heart. And then you brought it home to your own personal experience about your own devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus and the decades of devotion that your life's work has given the world. I learned more in that session than I could have imagined. I left from that session just writing, writing notes about my relationship with the Lord and what my life would mean and how I could express it, my love for the sacred heart of Jesus as a Cabrini lay missionary. Thank you for that. And thank you for your life's work and how it touches the life and the heart of so many people, such as myself. The second time was during the retreat. And at that time in 2022, I had a lot of burning questions during that retreat. A lot of heavy questions on my heart about leadership, and about making tough decisions and about how leaders are supposed to lead and what we're supposed to do for the people and how do you manage balancing the head and the heart with the work of our hands. And I asked Sister Eileen, how did you do it when you were president? How did you make tough decisions? What were you thinking about? And on and on, I'm rambling to you. And you looked at me with great compassion. <laughs> Your advice was simple. It was viable, it was relevant, and very timely. There was a humility in realizing that we don't have access to all of the answers all of the time when we want them. We don't have access to a broader perspective we have to allow our lives and our problems to unfold with faith. It will come to a decision. It will make me. You said to me, Angela, we make decisions based on what we are called to do in a moment. And we have to trust God that all will be well on the other side of those decisions. Thank you, Sister Eileen for the great wisdom that you gave to me and that now I'm sharing with you. Sister Eileen Curry is a leader who is evolving as we are all evolving, hopefully. Evolving in humility and insight, wisdom. Tonight she's going to share nuggets of wisdom with us. Nuggets on the Cabrini legacy, honoring our history, continuing our mission. Let us please recognize Sister Eileen Curry, MSC, a warm and hearty Cabrini welcome. <laughs> Helen, Ray, and Angela, thank you very much for welcoming me flattering me, <laughs> and I'll get you everywhere. Uh, <laughs> um, this is a privileged moment for me, and I don't pretend that it's not. We're reflecting tonight on a very precious jewel. We're reflecting on a dream that became a reality. 
But let me also extend my great appreciation for so many of you being here. Familiar faces, friends and colleagues. I can't tell you what it's like. Students who remember how bad I was. <laughs> uh, how I caught them coming down the stairs of the mansion. I said, Shadow, go get Mary Whelan. <laughs> Only the Shadow knew. So before we began, so many of us had a chance to share some of those 67 years of history. There were an awful lot of stories in 67 years. <laughs> but so many of them we ended with, well, you know, it's just a Cabrini thing. Mm -hmm. Ever since I was invited to give some thoughts about this momentous time, I can't tell you how many drafts I wrote and tore up. How many times at night I would say, well, there's an idea, and I would jot it down and tore that up. I couldn't find what I wanted to find. I even went to that song that some people here will remember, celebrate, come on, celebrate. But remember, I can't sing, so you're spared that too. So. Tonight is really about a founding dream that sparked other dreams, which in turn sparked other dreams. Dreams that became a real reality far greater than the original dream. So since I wasn't getting inspiration, I went to William Shakespeare and asked if I could borrow a soliloquy that he gave to Mark Antony, but very different and a different modality. So here it is. I came not to bury Cabrini, but to praise her. The founder's dream was rooted firmly in the vision of the namesake Mother Cabrini herself. A vision of educating people holistically, what so many thought was too nunny sounding as education of the heart. However, there are about 18,000 people walking around the world with educated hearts. The Cabrini legacy and mission are alive and living. The founding dream was fragile but determined. No shrinking violet was Mother Ursula. She knew how to find real estate agents, lawyers to draw up contracts and papers for Harrisburg, find furniture, and yes, faculty. It was no small feat that she could run, she could rob from other MSC schools and offices the nuns that she needed to get this dream up and running. She handled critics and, and champions alike. Determination was an operation. Determination won the accreditation to grant degrees. Determination gave life to the dream. The Cabrini legacy and mission is alive and living. Along 67 years, there were avid supporters, staunch benefactors, trustees who gave their time, energy, counsel, and presence, and encouragement so that the dream, the dream could continue to flourish. They were often the unknown working behind the scenes, but vital to the mission that kept unfolding. So you see, the Cabrini legacy and mission is alive and living. While buildings may hold their unique nostalgia, the nostalgia is about people and events that took place in them. Walls can speak of the hours of conversations about history, finance, religion, social work, philosophy, language, literature, art, music, math, and science. And then journalism, radio stations, first-class newspaper, a literary journal, a theater program, and a cabaret. The list is too long, but the dreams kept unfolding. So you see, the Cabrini legacy is alive and living. There were trips to Appalachia during spring breaks with lived experience of what we called social justice outreach to Norristown. In the early years, there were two faculty members 
who dared to address the sisters who were gathered here in 1976. They had the chutzpah to consider asking the MSCs to allow lay people to come and live with them and share in mission. That dream became Project Outreach. Catholic Relief Services, trips to Argentina, Swaziland, conversations that led not just to talk about social justice, but to also spark courses where those social issues were thus experienced and then finding solutions. The Cabrini legacy, you see, it's alive and living. There were teachers whose classrooms were the basketball court, the field for lacrosse and soccer and field hockey. We call these teachers coaches, but educators they were. They participated in the gig of, enter of educating the heart like everyone else did. There are a lot of trophies giving witness to their successes, but the real success is in the athletes who live that education of the heart on and off the field. So you see, the Cabrini legacy and mission is alive and living. Education was foremost in the mind and heart of the founder and the foundress. So you can imagine that the education department flourished, granting degrees in all levels of education and advanced degrees in educational leadership. Imagine all those teachers who are now teaching others, educating other hearts, even little ones. You know, that was another part of the dream, the children's school. So you see, the Cabrini legacy and mission is alive and living. Now, the residence halls, they too were out to classrooms also. Screams of, I can't finish this paper. To conversations about sports, clothes, heartbreaks, successes, failures. What should we order for midnight snack? This is referred to as peer tutorials. Student support, student-led organizations, students on retreats, in campus ministry, advocacy work. Now they're involved in these parish, their parishes and churches, raising families, still giving of themselves for the sake of so many others. Leaders in communication, radio stations, civic leaders, business leaders and entrepreneurs, medical personnel, and good heavens, even religious and priests. The Cabrini legacy and mission are alive and living. Faculty and staff. What can we ever say that could ever adequately convey or give testimony to the extraordinary steadfast dedication and creativity of these men and women? Only about 18,000 people walking around better for having been with them. Teachers, mentors, and yes, dorm mothers, Librarians, deans, alumni personnel, campus ministers, registrars, groundkeepers, bookstore and mailroom personnel, even the business office. Those 18,000 women and men were given an education for their minds and hearts to become the very best person they can become and are still becoming. So you see, the Cabrini legacy and mission is alive and living. The original dreamers are too many to adequately name, and so many of them have gone home to God. Faculty and staff. They gave of themselves and were all the recipients of their dedication and hard work, bringing dreams to life. Remembering Mother Ursula, Mother Gervais, Sister Barbara Leonardo, Sister Regina Casey, and Sister Mary Lou Sullivan, without whom this Cabrini movie would never have come into existence. I include Dr. Tony Iderola because she's part of that heavenly choir. They were all dreamers. And because of them, 
the Cabrini legacy and mission is alive and living. Permit me a personal note. I grieve, too, the conclusion of Cabrini as we have known her. This has been my home since 1962 when I first drove up the drive to begin classes. It's been my home not just because I was a student, not just because I had the privilege of working on staff here, not just because I met so many wonderful people. I entered religious life here. I celebrated my 25th anniversary here. It was the women and the men who were my professors and mentors all along. Even when I was working here, they were still my mentors and professors. They influenced my life in so many ways and still do today. I think, I analyze, I wonder, I ponder, and I have a way then to begin to respond because they taught me and still are teaching me. It's a reason for profound gratitude. And I have to tell you how profoundly grateful I am for having been a part of Cabrini. May each and every one of us decide clearly and strongly what the legacy and mission is ours to carry forward and commit to make sure it has life. Truly, we were all given so much. We can cry out together, hail, all hail, Cabrini, our alma mater, grand. Yes, thank you very much. That was wonderful. Let's give another round of applause to Sister Eileen Curry, President Emerita of Cabrini University. <laughs> you painted an incredible picture for us of the profound impact that Cabrini constituents, faculty, staff, especially students and alumni have made. You talked about the 18,000. Give or take. Give or take. <laughs> I wanted to give us an opportunity to kind of think about your remarks, Cabrini, today, yesterday, in preparation for tomorrow. Sister Eileen, could you share with us your thoughts about the impact of educated hearts on the world stage today in any way that you'd like to talk about the impact of this 18,000 person army in the world, shining their light in the world. How many days do we have? <laughs> you know, Angela, it's not so much what we've done in, you know, in our lives, although it's important what we've done in our lives. It's the quality of who we are. It's the quality of the Cabrini man and woman who is willing to say what they believe and what they trust in, how they treat one another in business and in schools, how they reflect the good in the world and not just get caught in the negativity, how they are willing to look at what can be instead of what isn't. Um, I, I know so many of you have done so many wonderful things, and I am so grateful for that. But just think of all the women and men and children your lives have touched. Because when we give ourselves away, the world has to be better. Because our world is inclined to stay at home in ourselves and not give away. Everything that we have been given is pure gift, pure gift. And every gift is not to be held in our pockets for ourselves. 
every gift is given to be given away. And so many of you have been doing that so well for so many years. Congratulations. Our world needs the Cabrini touch. Our world needs Cabrini women and men who are convinced that there is something always more that we can do for the good of others. So please, God, we will always do it. Amen. Every nugget is so chock full of wisdom and contemplation. So Sister Eileen, you talked about giving ourselves away. And this is a moment for us. This is a very real moment. We're at different stages and places of accepting this charge that the Lord has given to us at this moment. How, how can we help others among us who haven't turned that corner yet? to turn that corner and feel inspired to accept and to give more at this time. I, Angela, I think it's, this will sound very simplistic. It is being who we really are and being genuine. I, you know, you can preach and teach, but to be a real leader is also to just model in your everyday lives. It, it doesn't, you don't need a pulpit. <laughs> Ursula did not need a pulpit. She did it more by being present, listening, being curious, asking questions. It's more about presence than it is anything else. Presence, that's real and powerful. Presence power, that's a, a term I heard. Eckhart Tolle used once. Being present to each other and being present to ourselves is what I hear you say. For us to take in the moment and see what's needed now. You know, Angela, part of that presence, you know, we talk about, uh, you want to talk about an educated heart. A heart is willing to listen to another. A sensitive heart is willing to not give advice necessarily, but to just be there, to be present, to not judge. If there's anything that Cabrini men and women can do, it's hang up judgment. Hang it up as high as you can and discard it. Judgment is what our culture teaches. But we Cabrini people know something else. And we need to live that. We need to be just present and welcoming and accepting. I don't care who it is or where they come from. All those things are very unimportant. But the world is better if Cabrini men and women are willing to always be present and open and welcoming. She did that. No, and she did a great deal of that. She, I know, she was, a, she was a hard nut from time to time. But every person in her job had to be a hard nut. <laughs> no comment back there. <laughs> no, no, I really mean this, Angela. I think we need to just let everybody be and welcome them. That is so powerful. You know, recently we were talking about the charism of the MSCs. What does that look like? What is it? Who's codified it? You know, how could you package it and give it to somebody? Someone says, well, how is your charism distinguished from this other charism and the Augustinian charism and all of that conversation? And in so many ways, it's lived, it's embodied. I hear you say that. There are resources that we have, right, that we can maybe point to. I was curious, um, what's one of your favorite texts or books that, that speaks to this charism? Um, there are four authors, Matthew, 
Mark, Luke, and John. Love it. <laughs> Amen. No, no, no. All, all kidding aside, think of, think of, you know, those globes that they used to have in dance halls and, you know, and they're all made of little pieces of glass. Hmm? Disco ball. Thank you kindly. I knew somebody would know. Anyway, think of charisms. Think of charisms as little pieces of that. And they're all reflecting the same light. It could be Augustinian. It could be Franciscan. It could be Cabrinian. No. It might even be Jesuit, but don't tell them. <laughs> no. All I'm saying is, it's all of a piece. There is no one. It's only Jesus. Forgive me. I'm, that's, that's my strong, strong bias. That's why I go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and sometimes John. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Do we have any questions for members of the audience or our participants online? When did you get shy? <laughs> I know some of you, you're not that shy. There's a microphone coming to your way. Anna? <laughs> you started by talking about her talk about the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And I want to know, how do we promulgate the love and the devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus in our lives? I'm going to go back and keep it very... It's very simple. It is not to be complicated. It's to keep looking at Jesus. It's to keep reading and studying him and living what we learn from him. It is that simple. It is not, it is not theological. It is living. It has texture. So when you and I live true to what we see in him, we are promoting that heart of Christ. So when we're promoting a devotion to the Sacred Heart on a first Friday of every month and trying to get the people that are there who want to be a part of this, what do we say to them to make them keep going? Thank them for being there. Start with thanking them for being there and encourage them to come the next one, the next one, and ask them to invite somebody to come with them. We don't need to preach. We need to invite. I mean, how do we deal with the profound sadness we feel right now? This was our second home for many of us. How do we say goodbye? This, I wish I had an answer. All I can do is say, let's cry. <clears throat> let's cry together. Let's tell that it's a Cabrini thing story. Let's never let go. But you know, it's still alive and living. That's what's, to me, is what is consoling. When I think, now, I'm going to embarrass a few people right here, but there are two young women who are going to graduate this year with degrees in education. They're my grandnieces. I know that they're going to continue the legacy and the mission, and they're a lot younger than I am, and perhaps you. <laughs> no, all I'm saying is, Liz, we're just going to hang together. We'll cry together, but we're going to laugh and tell those stories until the cows come home. I think um, there are some of us that 
um, that whole Cabrini thing, you know, anywhere in the world, if you encounter a Cabrini person, like it's immediately home, you know? And so, you know, how would you encourage um, us to continue that? Like there's a bigger world besides Cabrini University that is Cabrini. And what are some of the highlights for you um, as you look at your next chapter and our next chapter and going forward? What are, what are some of those, those golden nuggets that are, that are, that are living on? Good grief. Well, you know, some of our sisters came from Ethiopia and studied here and have gone back and they're teaching in Africa and in Uganda. There are people in Swaziland as well as Ethiopia. Some of you may remember the name Therese Mirandi. She was on the board at one time. Well, she's in Italy doing her thing these days. I wish I could tell you tell you that there's one way. Robin and I met up because we were at Sister Bernadette Cashano's <clears throat> funeral about two weeks ago. And there was this tall, lanky guy who had this collar on and he stood up. It was Gus Nicoletti for crying out loud. Do you remember Gus Nicoletti? Well, he's brother Gus Nicoletti now. <laughs> he was in, he was in uh, Ethiopia the same time Sister Regina Peterson was there. You might remember Regina. Oh, Gus is back and doing Gus's thing with the Christian brothers and all that kind of stuff. But it was like, well, the world keeps connecting. And all we need to do is to give our, do our part to keep the connections. I am not the best communicator and I will own that. I, I don't do Facebook very well. I don't do that kind of media, but I'm going to get a lot better at it. Um, because I want to help the Cabrini connection stay connected to the extent that I can. With Liz and most everybody here, we do grieve and maybe part of staying together is to allow ourselves, do you remember? Do you remember? And I will forget, so you have to remind me because I'm old enough to have a bad memory. <laughs> I'm only 67 years old. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I was, I, I was really young when I started here. I was really young when I was a college president here. I was young when I left here. And I come back really old. But anyway, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but listen, I think we just need to really work at staying together in whatever ways we can as gently and as consistently as we can. It's worth it. In line with this conversation, uh, I am on Facebook. <laughs> uh, and I read everything. It's just full of advertising for the movie. And I read every comment. And I've kind of made that a personal mission. Most of them are very positive and people are excited. I can't wait to see it, that kind of thing. Then there are a few, not too many, that are like really bad negative stuff. I kind of avoid those. There are others that are missed in, missed that people are saying things that are just, they're misinformed. So I try to explain what, you know, to correct. And I try to be nice about it. I say, um, for your information, or just to share, you know, let you know that Mother Cabrini is not, her mummified body is not in New York, or she's not buried in the hills of Colorado. I mean, all kinds of crazy stuff. In a case like that, I try to make, the, you know, let set it straight. But what I really wanted to say now is that as I'm reading these comments, I'm kind of blown away because I'll see things like, I'm gonna make these up, it'll give you an idea. Uh, my grandfather was the chef in the hospital in Seattle, and he says what wonderful memories he has. My cousin went to school in Burbank, California, and she you know, always talks about the teachers, and how wonderful he was, of course. Uh, 
but things like that, and they're coming from all over, and people who have had experiences in different places. And like this is speaking, is saying to me, what can, you know, what can we do with that? I'd like to connect people. Uh, I'll tell you a story, and this really did happen in New Orleans several years ago. Somebody from Cabrini College was walking around the French Quarter with Cabrini shirt on. And there was a kid there in the French Quarter with the Cabrini High School, Cabrini High in New Orleans. And they saw each other. I was like, Cabrini, yeah, Cabrini. And it was like they were best buds. So that kind of thing happens. And like, I don't know what we can do, but like, I'm thinking something, maybe a Zoom call and get people to say hello to each other. And I'm from here and I'm from there and I, whatever. But I think we got to keep those connections going. Thank you, Sister Christine. You know, our sisters are also in uh, Nicaragua, Guatemala, Mexico. They're also part of our province now. And um, they have Cabrini connections because they are Cabrini, but they have Cabrini schools and, and missions there. You may want to look at the Cabrini World. Is that the right, the, the website, Cabrini World? And keep in touch with what's going on in different parts of the world. Uh, we have an, the international communications is up and live, and so it's really a good website you might enjoy reading from time to time. Excuse me? The sisters have the vineyard in Mendoza, Cabrini Winery. I don't know. But I like wine. We're going to drink a bottle tonight. <laughs> well, you know, the Cabrini Vineyard was also in Argentina. One of Mother's uh, brothers, I don't know if it was just one or more, but they emigrated to Argentina and started a vineyard down there. And there is a Cabrini wine that every once in a while makes an appearance in the United States. The last time I was here to bring my new husband to visit and show him where I used to live in the well, current husband, that's right, you could say that, you never know. Um, to show him around the mansion and just see where we lived and our great balcony and everything. And <laughs> somebody came out and gave me a bottle from Mendoza, Argentina. Yeah, so okay. it exists. I have a 2017 Malbec we're going to drink. No, it, it, someone said it's very good. I've never had the opportunity of having any, even though I'm a Cabrini sister. They never gave it to us. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm just going to cry again. any way that that would be useful to sisters that are working in other fields and other places and if we could maybe donate to that organization. I would never say no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now the Cabrini Foundation gives not just to Cabrini um, works but they also help other fledgling organizations. You know we have two what do we call them, Christine Marie? I'm losing, uh, what are our two primary works? We have, we work against the, 
I work against human trafficking, and we work for immigrants. Cor thank you. I knew somebody would know the right word, corporate stance. So th there's an inclination to move in that direction, and the foundation works that way. But these all, they also have funded students who needed help to get to school. They have helped in small ways wherever they can. They have sent money to the border to support um, Catholic services down there. Um, so yes, I would encourage you if you have an extra dime, the foundation would be very grateful to receive it. Thank you, Sharon. Hang on. I just read today on Facebook that the a, a part of the profits, I don't know what percentage, of the movie is going to go to the Sabrina Mission Foundation. Please go. <laughs> Let me just say something, if I may, about the movie. Yeah. If you're thinking of the song of Bernadette, it's nothing like that. If you're, this is not, um, th this is not a mushy, that's an unfair way of putting it. This is about a woman who is determined to make things happen. She found a way to make it happen. And that's why Ursula, who met Cabrini once when she was very young, had the same chutzpah and the same determination to make this work. Friends, I don't want you to think that this is the only Cabrini mission that is no longer going forward. All of the hospitals in the United States are not in existence. Many of the schools where we served, we no longer serve. It is the ebb and flow of life. But I want you to see that movie because that woman was determined, as so many of you are determined in your life to make a difference and that you can continue to make a difference. There's a reason why it's being released on in the early part of March, because it's Women's Month. My, my apologies, gentlemen. <laughs> I don't mean to leave you out. But it's to show what this woman could do. And she had devotion to the heart of Christ that was strong enough to withstand every cleric who said no to her. Due respect to clergy. But she had the determination not to be pushed back at all. She was obedient to the church. She was always obedient. But she never let somebody's opinion keep her down. She was strong. And so are you, all of you. You can't quit, friends. No. I love that. I can't keep it shut. <laughs> this is something that I just found out a couple months ago. In 1908, Mother Cabrini was invited to speak at the first international women's conference held in Rome. Maybe that's why it's being released on Women's Day, right? She was not able to attend because of her other responsibilities but she did present a paper that was read at the fifth session. And in her paper, she wrote about the contributions of immigrant, Italian immigrant women to their families and to society. So, there you go. That is so wonderful. Sister Arlene, you have a theme for us tonight that the Cabrini legacy and mission is alive and living. It's alive and living through all of us. One reflection I just have about the movie that you inspired me to consider is how her story is universal. No matter your station in life, your gender, your race, your age, what language you speak, it's a universal story. It's a universal impetus around determination, and I appreciate you saying that. She's accessible to us. She makes Christ accessible to us. And I appreciate um, all of the work that all of us 
have done in our own unique ways to make Cabrini what it is. Sister? Angela, just I would be remiss if I did not say thank you to everyone who has made this painful journey of this year be as loving and gentle as possible. Helen, I can't thank you enough for your leadership and your stewardship in all of these months. You have been more than remarkable. I just need to say thank you. Absolutely. God has spoken. And we all carry the mission and the vision in our hearts and in our minds and in the works of our hands as we move forward. There is an opportunity for all of you here and online to share any of your reflections on what the Cabrini mission means to you on the QR code in your program at the bottom. QR code. And if you need any assistance in finding that, we can help you. And you don't have to do it now or today, but just know that as you have reflections on tonight, on the theme of the Cabrini mission being alive and living, on the education of the heart, on the charism, on the sacred heart of Jesus, on anything around your reflections of your experience at Cabrini, memorialize that by sharing that on the QR code at the bottom of your program. And we will keep that for the future. Sister Eileen, do you have any other reflections? I guess none. Thank you. No, I, I just don't think there are enough tissues tonight for me to go forward. Are there any more questions or comments from people in the audience? You're welcome to share. Anyone online? Ray? I just wanted to share one of my favorite Mother Ursula stories. When I was a junior here, um, we started the year with an opportunity to, um, but it was presented to us that we could go to a Navajo reservation out in Arizona to teach over the Christmas holiday. And we were told that we would have to drive out and drive back. And, uh, you know, we, we were like, oh, this is going to be so much fun. You know, we take a trip over Christmas. And um, I'm trying to remember when it was, probably right before we left for the holidays, uh, Mother Ursula took us into the um, mansion and sat us down and said, uh, first she read a number of things from Mother Cabrini. And she looked at us and she said, um, Mother Cabrini never had the chance to go out west. She wanted to, and she never had the opportunity. So now it's your responsibility to take her wishes with, you know, her wish to go and do something. And um, she told us then that the college was paying for us to fly out, um, which, you know, as I'm sitting here tonight thinking about this and thinking about how sad we all are, you know, when we came to, um, alumni weekend after we left, I texted my friends and said, um, Cabrini's not a building, you know, it's a, it's a way of life, right? And, and everybody who, when I say, oh, I went to Cabrini, you know, what, what's everybody saying to you? Oh, I'm so sorry, right? Everyone, and you try to explain to them what it's like to be an alum, and you can't. Like, even today, I was saying that I was coming here and you know, because it was like a family. We were a fa we are a family. It's a family. And when, you know, difficult things happen in your family, you, you have to grieve and then move on. But we, we are together in spirit. So I, oh, that, that, I think that lesson from Mother Ursula that night just has stood with me. You know, like this is, Mother Cabrini was, you know, she was a, a person with a purpose. And we had a purpose to go out west. And we, you know, taught for a week in the, in the, on the reservation, and we took her spirit with us. 
that time. So I just wanted to share that story. So the Cabrini legacy and mission is out there on that reservation. Thank you. I have um, a question for you, Sister Eileen. As you were talking, and I appreciate your stories and your memories about Mother Ursula and Mother Cabrini. Um, in many ways, teaching is intensified learning. And when I think about the education of the heart, I do think about the ways that I'm transforming, but the ways that I'm transformed by the work that I'm doing. Could you speak to us about how we are transformed in the way we give ourselves to others? Well, if I um, were to say that the faculty here who were colleagues but more mentors in my time working with you, um, you gave yourself to me while I was supposed to be helping you. It's so mutual, and that's how it really works. There were faculty here and staff who were here. While I, w I had this title, but you taught me. You supported me. You counseled me. You laughed at me. You, oh, you laughed with me. <laughs> Both and. No, it's, it's that, it is that give and take. It's presence and receiving the presence of another. It's no mystery. It's being the best human we can be. I think the thing that touches me most about Mother Cabrini is, and I came to this campus from a whole different world in corporate America and was brought here by an interim president. And I'm so grateful because this community means everything to me. But the thing that touches me most, and the thing of the Cabrini movie that touched me most is, Mother Cabrini kept her eyes on God and she followed what he wanted regardless of whether any human tried to tell her no. But she kept her eyes on God, and that's what we need to do. Thank you. If you've not seen the movie, bear with me if I say something about it. One of the most profound moments of the movie for me was when Mother was leading that early band of sisters they were walking, they had just arrived and there was nowhere to go. And she is, they're walking through Hell's Kitchen kind of situation in Five Points, New York. She turned and said to the sisters, look, don't look away. See them. You know, good religious keep their eyes down and they walk. She said, look, look. And she went to every leader in that town to get them to see. Look and see, look and see. If you read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, you will see that that man, Jesus, kept saying, look, do you see her, Simon? Look, do you see her? Do you see him? That's what Cabrini modeled. Look and see, and then take action. It's a great movie. <laughs> and I have to thank Mary Lou Sullivan. I used she drove me to drink. <laughs> but with all due respect, without Mary Lou, we wouldn't have this movie because she wrote the book, she got it published, and she told <laughs> she she told Miss she told Wolfington, you have to make the movie. You have to make now she died and he said, Okay, I'll make the movie. <laughs> Okay, Mary Lou, I'm sorry. I 
I want to thank you, Sister Eileen, for your presentation, your, your presentation that you gave at the beginning, because I was looking for a way where I could feel a little more peace about what was happening. And you gave me the perspective of the 18,000 and the family of employees and friends that we all made here and how it's going to ripple out forever. And I look on Facebook with Sister Christina and I see all the babies that all of our students are having and I'm, I'm feeling like now there's another ripple and then there's gonna be more ripples. <laughs> and you gave me a sense of peace and um, I don't think I'm quite as mad <laughs> as I was when I first walked in here. So I wanna thank you for that. And I wanna thank all of the sisters for one other thing and Mother Ursula who, who I had was lucky enough to know when she was here. Um, you are all inclusive and you accept us and you accepted everybody. And that's what made me and other employees and faculty who are not Catholic feel the heart and feel that we belonged and we could contribute and we could do good like you're doing good. And I wanna thank you and Sister Christine too. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I just wanted to, to thank you for inspiring the, by talking about the movie and talking about all, how like the thing that struck me the most is that all things are possible. You know, like she loved that quote, I can do all things in God who strengthens me, but like that, when you even think of the history of the 67 years of Cabrini, where we were at the forefront, you know, we were we were going to Appalachia and doing community service before that was a requirement anywhere, right? We we were at the forefront of things. There were our graduates that were going to Cabrini Medical Center working with AIDS patients in the 80s before people were even calling that AIDS, you know. So just that that possibility of that we follow in the footsteps of these of these incredible and, and on the shoulders of these incredible people who were of their time and beyond their time and always looked at the possibility that was right in front of them and i think sometimes i get mired in the oh it's not going to be here anymore but how can it not be here anymore you know so i, I wanted to thank you for reminding us of that Are there any questions online? Thank you so much, Sister Eileen. Thank you so much for being here. So at this time, Dr. Ray Ward is going to come and share the next treat that we have. Sister Eileen, I've come up here to thank the event staff for making this possible. Sodexo for catering and the catering staff that have made this wonderful. Also, Studio 67, the Cabrini's in-house media team that's here putting this online. And. Uh, John Doyle has asked me to remind everybody that if you're interested in being interviewed and put on a uh, record and put into a documentary that's being made about Cabrini, he'd love to uh, find a time to meet with you and talk for as little or as long as you'd like. But finally, at the end, we are here to thank you. And we've uh, put together a little award that we call the Core Yezu Award. So when we moved away from Founders Day, and on our call, you reminded us that Mother Ursula wouldn't want us to think of a singular founder, that it was faculty and staff and students that built this place and that made it possible and it will continue to build going forward. Um, so the Core Yezu Award is named for the heart of Jesus. And 
any educators out there, we're not talking about a deposit model of education, but we do think about the filling of hearts. So, and I think our hearts were filled tonight in the listening. And we'll go pour that out for others. And we'll know that we'll always be filled again uh, because the source is not us, but it is God. And so we have uh, inscribed on the back a quote from Mother Cabrini that we've been using for a while, and I think it's particularly fitting now to say, it's from her final letter to her sisters. It's one of the last lines, and she says, renew your courage, put yourself on the right road, and start running. Sister Eileen, thank you so much. It's now my pleasure to invite Tony Reeves, our Director of Campus Ministry, to close us with a final reflection. Thank you again. Good evening. As we set our, our focus on the road ahead, my final thought and question to you is have you made an impact? Because if your presence doesn't make an impact, then your absence won't make a difference. The Cabrini missionary pedagogy, grounded in the love of the sacred heart of Jesus, has transformed so many. It is clear that an education of the heart has equipped all of us to use our skills and intellectual gifts to serve others. During one of Mother Cabrini's travels, September of 1899, she said, you are the friends of Jesus, the guardians of his treasure, safeguard the rights of this realm, generously and willingly share its crosses and concerns in order to guide those entrusted to your care. Have you taken on this challenge? For it is at the heart of our human desire to be our best in the service of all we come in contact with. If your presence doesn't make a diff an impact, then your absence won't make a difference. Pope Francis said each one of us can experience wounds, failure, suffering, self, selfishness that make us close ourselves off from God and others. But God wants to open our heart. Mother Cabrini says we must do all in our power to lead others to his heart. As you look toward the road ahead, remember this hope. Remember this heart. Remember its magic as it is where love resides. Memories are created. Friends, belongings, and laughter will never end. It is the safe place, a sacred space, where healing started and is not ended. Remember the spirit of quaintness, satisfaction, and love that surrounded you while you spent time in this place. Share the lessons of this home everywhere you go. The missionary sisters lived this. Mother Cabrini displayed this, and you know this. The sacred heart of Jesus is with you. You are the friends of Jesus, the guardians of his treasure. Safeguard the rights of this realm. Keep high the banner. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Make an impact. Let your presence make the difference. Amen? Thank you. That concludes the formal portion of our program today. Uh, we do have plenty of food and drink. I hope everybody has a designated driver. 
uh, enjoy that. But we are asking to now adjourn to uh, the side here, charge your glass. We're going to ask Sister Eileen to offer a very informal toast to Mother Ursula with her customary slice of cake and glass of Miller Lite or whatever other beverage that you choose. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming. I'd like to, us to also thank Dr. Ray Ward for his leadership of the Wolfington Center and being a steward of this wonderful event. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. So Mother you, as we called you, Mother Ursula, thank you so very much. Mm -hmm.